Welcome to working with DATs. DATs are data operators and they're used to hold text data like strings, scripts, and XML. DATs either contain multiple lines of text, as in a script, or a table of cells that's made up of rows and columns. Let's take a look at how we can work with DATs. Let's open up the OpCreate dialog, head over to the DAT family, and begin by adding a text DAT here into our network. Now we can interact directly with, a, uh, with our uh, DATs by clicking on the viewer active flag, and let's just type in something simple like, hello world. Now it's pretty common for us to want to move the contents of a text DAT into say uh, something like a text top. So let's add a text top here in our network. Let's go ahead and clear out the default value for the text parameter. And now I'm going to click and drag my text DAT and drop it on the DAT parameter on my text top. And now the contents of my text DAT are displayed inside of my text top. Let's add another line by making our text DAT viewer active and adding something like this is another line. Now what we'll see is that it doesn't fit inside of our text top, and that's all right. We can use the word wrap parameter to go ahead and fit all of that inside of our text top. Let's take a look at table dats. Let's open up our opcreate dialog, head back to the dat family, and add a table here to our network. With the table added to our, net our network, let's go ahead and make that viewer active, and let's begin by adding uh, First, something like orange here to our table. Now, I'd love to have another row uh, in my table dat, and what I can do is I can right click on the row and select add below. Now, that's not the only way I can manipulate the dimensions of my table. In fact, let's go ahead and add another table dat here to our network. And this time, let's specify some exact dimensions. Now, I happen to know that I want two rows and one column. I'm going to make this viewer active and I'm just going to go ahead and put in some values like 60 and 100. Excellent. Actually, maybe 60 and 1. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to combine the contents of these two tables and we can do that with a merge dot. I'm going to add that to my network. I'm going to hold down my right mouse button to box select both table 1 and table 2 and then I'm going to drag connect both of these operators at the same time to my merge. Now my merge by default is set to append rows, and I'm going to change that to be append columns. Finally, I want to sort the contents of this dat, so I'm going to go ahead and right click on the output of my merge dat, and I want to add a sort dat here into my network. Now what I'd like to do is I want to specify which column I'm going to use for sorting the contents of this table. So in this case, I want to specify the index of the column that I'm going to search against is going to be column 1 here. And that's gone ahead and rearranged the sort order of my table. Now I could also reverse the order here, or I could pick whether I wanted that to be sorted by numbers, alphabetical, alphabetical with numbers. Let's take a look at one other way that we use dats pretty commonly, and that's with our execute dats. Execute dats run a little bit of Python based on events that happen inside of our touch center network. And let's actually see what that means. Now I'm going to begin by adding an LFO chop into my network. I'm going to change this from being sign just to being pulse. And next, I'm going to add a count chop here into my network also. And I'm going to connect the LFO to the count. And this is going to increment our count one value at a time, which is great. Now, there are lots of things that we might do with this, but let's just take a, few, uh, a look at a few simple examples. So first, let's go ahead and right click on the output of our count, head over to the DAT family, and let's select chop execute. With our chop execute, uh, in our network, we can see there's lots of different options that we can choose from here. The flags for our execute uh, operator uh, specify when we run a, a block of Python code. So for example here, we might want to run this when the value of our chop goes from off to on, right? When it goes from zero to one. And in this case, what I want to do is I want to run this little bit of code every time the value changes. So I'm going to make sure that this flag is set to on. And the place where I'm going to update my Python is going to be inside of this method that is on value change. And that matches with the parameter value change. Now, let's start just by printing out the value. I'm going to go ahead and make my chop execute viewer active. And in here, I'm going to add a new line and I'm just going to print val. We can see here that I have this argument called val, and I'm going to just print that out to the text port. This is great. I don't see any errors, but it doesn't look like anything's happening. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the dialogs, and then I'm going to select text port and dats. And this is actually by default where our values are printed. 
this is a great way for us to debug our Python code. But maybe I don't want to just print this to the te text port. I actually want to put it somewhere else. So I'm going to close the text port. And this time, I'm going to add a text component here into my network. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to update this parameter called text. And I can see here that it's spelled text with a lowercase t. So let's write just a little tiny bit of Python to make that happen. So in this case, I'm going to say the operator that's called text3, whose dot par, its parameter that's called text, is going to be val. And let's see what happens. Sure enough, what we're seeing is every time this val changes, our little bit of Python here runs, and that updates our parameter. And in fact, if we hover over this parameter, we'll can see uh, where exactly that was set. We see a set and chop execute one on line 23, which is a great way for us to find our way back to what happened with our Python. This is just a little bit of some of the things you can do with DATS here inside a touch signer, and it's only just the tip of the iceberg.